Hey everybody, it's Party Elite here with some more Total War 3 Kingdoms gameplay for you today, playing as Yen Shao. First things first, a massive thanks goes out to Creative Assembly for giving me early access so that I could play this game and showcase it on my channel, and today we're going to showcase something a little different with our playstyle focus of alliances. I thought we could try and uh, do Tall Tall War. Play it tall as opposed to wide. Now of course, you kind of have to start with the typical Total War stuff, which is fighting a battle nearby, having a massive army using the extreme unit size, and also actually using the uh, records graphic style mode so that it's less super saturated, less ultra colorful, a bit more toned down, if you will. Uh, but yeah, you know, the, the typical start to a Total War campaign, a uh, small battle, an easy battle to deal with, uh, exploring some of the new options, taking a look at some of those charges, actually getting into a duel as well, and seeing exactly how cool and epic these duel animations might be and how they feel, you know, in a closer to release version. Uh, some interesting moments in these duels, for example, you know, some pretty nice synchronized animations, especially the one we're about to see right now. That one. <laughs> so yeah, kill the enemy army, perhaps perform a bit of a, uh, I think it's a war crime, what we just saw there in the campaign map. But it's the Han Empire, we've defeated their opening army, big whoop. Going to go ahead and ransom some of those troops, get a little bit of that money. Because again, economy is going to be very important. And then the next step is, of course, to take over the nearby town. You have to sort of follow the opening steps. And even when you're going to play a tall game, you do have to have uh, some holdings and you do have to have some military might. So my whole approach was to, uh, you know, have a little bit of a power base, capture whatever I can, have a couple of armies, and then take a look at our diplomatic options. And you can see over here, I'm exploring some options with Yuan Shao and the auxiliaries and stuff. We're not able to recruit anything just yet but I am able to assign different equipment if I want to. Uh, nothing really caught my eye, it is just the beginning. Uh, and over time we also made friends with Wen Chu, who is uh, one of our uh, generals alongside us, one of our uh, you know, s serving generals. And so that's always good, having friends helps uh, in battle. But eventually we have to dive in on this town, a decisive victory, no problems there. And we're actually able to recruit another general, and we're also able to uh, take a look at some of the assignments we might want to get going in this commandery as well, just again to make a little bit more money. So you can see we've got a couple of cities already, taking a look at some diplomatic options to kick things off. South Sal likes us a lot, we already have a non-aggression pact. I am uh, not liked by everybody, but up north you can see Han Fu. Uh, we're gonna have a little chat about maybe forming a coalition and you'll see uh, more or less right away that uh, there are some stipulations, some limitations to how coalitions work, as we already know. They're not the easiest thing to, you know, abide by. So I decide, okay, maybe, maybe not. Maybe let's talk to Cao Cao about a coalition instead. And he's really not that into it. I'd have to give him a lot of money, some ancillaries and stuff as well. Uh, and I don't know if I'm willing to pay all that much money for, a, for you know, allying with basically somebody who's so far away from me. Cao Cao is really far off south. So instead, I look at some of my other options. I go back to Han Fu over here. And he is a little bit you know, easier to sway. We're a bit more of a level playing field as far as uh, power is concerned. So he is easier to sway to get that coalition going with. But at the same time, I think, no, I don't want to spend that money right now. Let's save it up for uh, some bigger things down the line. I do manage to get a trade agreement off, though. Again, that's going to bring us some sweet money and that economy needs to be very powerful if we're going to try and uh, convince people to join us for with uh, with monetary you know, gains in mind. So we get that happening. Cao Cao does want to get one of our uh, ancillaries. He's willing to pay us, but not enough money. Not willing to get rid of our eavesdropper for that. And at the same time, with research as well, I'm taking a look at options that help our income. So you can see I haven't taken any military options or anything. It's all been economic options, trying to buff our income in a variety of ways. And uh, as that's happening, you can see a couple more things coming up, a few marriage requests, and this couple's gonna be a lovely couple. You can see how much they're gonna love each other with those massive X marks in those speech bubbles. But I figure, you know what, it's going to improve relations. Let's go ahead and do it. And uh, maybe I can use that down the line as well to sway some people over. And then we actually get an option to confederate with Han Fu right at the beginning. So I'm very glad I didn't uh, decide to start a coalition with them. It basically just takes me a minute to, or a second, I should say, to read this really quickly and decide, you know what? Um, we're straight up going to confederate their entire nation. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and confederate and get a couple more cities and a couple more armies as well. It does get really expensive. You can see my economy does take a little hit, but I actually increase in rank because of that. I become second marquee, which is great because for the really tall stuff, so to speak, 
vassalization and annexation and things like that, you need to get to the Marquis rank. Uh, you can see though, we do also get dragged into this war with Gong Sun Zan uh, because of this uh, because of this confederation. But hey, we'll deal with them. They're a little far up north. We'll deal with them eventually. I wanted the land and hopefully I wanted it to prosper as well. Uh, but as you can see, these new armies that have joined us, they are costing us a fair bit and they aren't really the best either. Uh, so I do eventually decide to disband them. You'll see it, not just yet, but eventually I will disband them as uh, we continue to expand our holdings a little bit further as well. We got uh, Henai, a, a farmland down there. And now because we are the second marquee, we also got the chancellor position unlocked and we also have the administrator position unlocked. So the chancellor, I figured is someone who should have high expertise because that seems to reduce construction cost. So I kind of took a look at my family in general section over here, found someone who seemed to have the highest expertise, took a look at some of their other, you know, what they're carrying, some of their equipment, saw if any of that would help. Not really. So uh, Lady Liu here became our chancellor. She doesn't really care for the position itself, and I had to give her a salary, but hopefully it'll help us make some more money. And then uh, Xu Yu over here, I decided to uh, give him the administrator role because you can see he's going to help with public order, construction costs, and income from all sources. So I went ahead and uh, gave him you know, control, so to speak, of the Yi commandery. And that'll just, again, help boost our income a little bit. The extremely important um, economic backbone of a, uh, of a tall empire, so to speak. So with all that done, decided to move on from that turn. And uh, you'll see Dong Zhuo actually is trying to get peace with me. But he's asking for a ridiculous amount of things. And I just say no. It's okay. <laughs> yes, I risk your fury. I don't care. Uh, but moments later, we have some more personal events going down in our court. Trying to see who I should be more friendly with. And I decide to side with my administrator rather than... Uh, well, I mean, I'm not even sure who the other person was, really. So I deepen my relationship again. That's what these little events are for. And meanwhile, down south, the small city of Dong is about to be hit by my relatively large army. I decide to, of course, build up some siege equipment. We can't just dive in there. It is a walled city. And uh, Huangxiao is a war we started uh, a couple of turns ago at this point. And I really just wanted to expand my holdings again. I really needed to uh, you capture some big cities to help me get up to that marquee rank so that I could start uh, you know, getting vassals and things like that. I tried demanding surrender. Maybe I should have waited until some of my equipment was done. Didn't work in my favor. We continue the siege, though. I mean, I'm, we all know I'm not patient enough to, to wait. Um, but yeah, we continue the siege. And at the same time, looking at some more of the reforms and some more opportunities to, uh, again, get some more money. And this time around, I was looking at the blue lines uh, because getting an extra trade route or two would be really helpful. So we went with foreign envoys here. You see it, it does give us access to some buildings, but it also adds an available trade agreement. And uh, that can make me some good money every turn. So we went with that, uh, again, going very economic. And at the same time, you can see uh, Cao Cao here really wants an ancillary off of me. He wants this trader for over a grand. I say, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we do that. No, we're not gonna do that. Maybe he'll push that number a little bit higher down the line. You can see as well, Huang Xiao here wants peace. Uh, they are a yellow turban rebellion faction. I'm tempted to to accept it with some terms. Unfortunately, though, because they are a yellow turban rebellion faction and they're a low ranking faction, there isn't much I can do with them. I was hoping to maybe push vassalization, even though I'm not really at a, in a role where I can do that yet. Uh, but no, there, there were no options and I'm sort of weighing my options as well. Do I really want to fight this war? Uh, on two fronts. I've got Huang Shao to the south and up north I've got the Han Empire and uh, the war that I just found myself in after my confederation. I've got this army roaming through my lands. So I accepted that peace agreement even though, you know, it wasn't really ideal for me. Kong Rong comes in as well in a moment's time with a non-aggression pact. I decide to accept that. Again, they're our neighbor and uh, I want good relations with all of our neighbors so that I can eventually vassalize them and get them to agree that I should be the emperor. Over here as well, uh, Wang Kuang. Uh, wants military access and he'll pay me money for it. Nothing to lose there. I accept that deal as well. Slowly but surely increasing the size of our treasury as I continue my war against the Han Empire as well. Just moving in towards uh, Henai. Henai? Sorry about butchering all these pronunciations. Um, I do try my best, but I don't have my uh, significant other coaching me today. Um, now, at the same time, we have this new trade agreement coming through again. I'm glad I took the reforms necessary for more trade agreements because that is quick and easy money and it improves relations. And you can see I start exploring some options as well, like uh, Wang Kuang and I have been getting along pretty well, so 
I take a look at the opportunity maybe of building some longer term relations, but they're, they want some crazy requests. So they want to see if I'm willing to give them land and all. And you can see it's maybes across the board for forming coalitions or military alliances. So I guess I'm not strong enough to be a desirable ally or, uh, or coalition buddy just yet. So we move on. I take a look at this uh, Sino Roman embassy here for the reforms. That'll give us another available trade agreement. Again, more money coming in down the line on a turn by turn basis, which I think is quite helpful. And our economy is looking okay right now, actually, as well. Um, but again, I can't really do anything with that new trade agreement just yet because nobody else has an open trade route available. So we're going to have to wait a little bit. And you can see Dong Min, who has taken over for Dong Zhuo, who died a couple turns ago. He's still trying to sue for peace over here, but I'm saying no because they still want a ridiculous amount of stuff. Cao Cao, meanwhile, wants my craftsman. He likes collecting ancillaries or something. They're like Pokemon to him, I guess. Uh, but he wants my craftsman. He's willing to pay over a grand. And, uh, I mean, sure. You know what? Take him. Give me the money. I'll use it for something else. I believe I was uh, a little strapped for cash while in this uh, war that I was in right now, so I, I accepted that deal. And at the same time, I do send a spy over to check out Gong Sun Zen's territory. I can't actually see anything of his yet, so I send a spy over because I've unlocked that option. And uh, as you can see, he heads off and attempts to infiltrate that faction's lands. Hopefully he'll get hired. We don't know. Meanwhile, a corrupt official at uh, at Henei, Hene, sorry again, uh, he decides that for a little bit of money, which I have, he will open the gates for five turns. So it limits my window for assaulting this city, but with open gates, I'm going to have a lot of options. Not only am I trying to destroy those walls a little bit, and I believe I've actually succeeded in doing that at least one step, but he's also trying to uh, let me in through the through the doors. Meanwhile, my spy over here, you can see, has spotted Gong Sun Zen's territory. I'm actually able to see him on the map right now, but until he gets hired, there isn't much I can do with him. So uh, I focus on my efforts uh, to the south over here. You can see my army is much larger than the army that is garrisoned at the city here. We dive in, take the battle to the battlefield because uh, the game said it would be a, I think, a Peric victory at best. It, it said it wasn't going to go too well, but with the gates open for us, uh, it was very easy for us to roll right in and get some beautiful rear charges, some surprising cavalry attacks coming in from, uh, you know, open gates to the left and right of the city. And up top over here at the city center, I was actually chasing after the enemy general as well. Wen Chu over here on horseback, not really knowing how to use a stick, I suppose, just kind of chasing. It's like, just poke him, just trip his horse, do literally anything. It's not a duel, because a duel was being refused, but I literally went chasing after the enemy general to try and get him to surrender, and it took some time. It took a lot of dancing back and forth uh, until he finally gave up on the fight, and uh, as he gave up, so too did the rest of his army, and we had our victory. So it was an interesting battle. I was able to come in from multiple sides, and it lasted uh, roughly, I think, eight to nine minutes. We're about to see the time here. So yeah, almost 10 minutes. Relatively short, but to be fair, it was a very one-sided battle. Uh, I was mainly going up against those walls. But another city captured from the Han Empire. Uh, looking at all of our options, I decide to simply occupy it, get that extra money, and we also get bonus experience from completing this little, you know, mission, I guess. Uh, over here, everything has been destroyed, horribly damaged, which actually works in my favor, because I can start things a little bit from scratch. There are some buildings that I can use that will help me gain more prestige, that'll help me get to higher ranks sooner, so that's what I can take a look at over there. And meanwhile... Our spy is uh, going from city to city, trying to scout out and uh, and figure out where he might be able to infiltrate properly. So you can see, I can I can actually see a fair bit of Gong Sun Zen's territory now. Uh, so if I wanted to plan an attack or if I wanted to move in, uh, I have that option, even if my spy doesn't get hired as a general or a governor or anything. Meanwhile, you can see to the east here, I have a new war starting as well. So that's not really great. Zhang Yan decided to declare war on me. I guess he saw an opening. Um, and meanwhile, I'm uh, my economy is hurting. I can't really raise another army or anything. I can't build anything. So I'm in a bit of a backfoot scenario. I might adjust tax rates to fix that. And you can see Gung Sun Zen over here actually wants peace, but he wants an ancillary and food for it, which I don't think I'm willing to uh, really give away just yet. Food is extremely important. Uh, I learned very quickly how how much of a trade resource food really is, and we have. As Yuan Xiao, we have a good opportunity to make a lot of food. So this isn't really where I wanted to use it, I don't think. So I, I, I told this guy to, to leave me alone. Uh, but as you can see, Zhang Yan over here, moving in, trying to destroy me. 
a very worrying situation, um, but I had to fight this battle on the battlefield, and we won. It was a Peric victory, but we won. We would have to take some time to regroup. We managed to capture an enemy character as well. I had a couple of options of what to do. Decided to employ them just to keep them on our side and then ransom all the captives for a huge chunk of cash, which would really help me maybe get some buildings done that would ultimately help me make more money per uh, per turn or something. At the same time, you can see Liu Dai over here wants a non-aggression pack and wants to pay me money for it. So I guess my power level is finally getting to a point where people are a little scared and they want me to, uh, you know, be happy with them. Meanwhile, my spy wasn't actually able to infiltrate fully. He got some scouting done, but wasn't hired for any purpose. So that's a little disappointing, but I'll have to assign him elsewhere. While uh, back in our home cities, again, looking at some options for making more income per turn, including technology, or I should say reforms, finding a way to make more money. Because as you saw moments ago, we were in a bit of a financial crunch. And of course, we're, we're editing the turns here. So we're going through things a little bit faster uh, than things were otherwise played, obviously. But as you can see, more non-aggression packs and an opportunity to take this copper mine to the south of me uh, and maybe turn the tide of this war as well. A very easy battle, decisive victory. We ought to resolve that one. Occupied it in a way that would allow us to get quicker uh, reinforcements, but that did hurt our lineage a little bit. Uh, we had to spend some lineage points. A fine deal, a fine deal. Meanwhile, you can see the enemy army down south over there by the Yellow River. Uh, still poses a threat to me, but Shen Dang over here is uh, open for, for taking. But I don't want to fight this war anymore. I've got enough wars on my plate. As you can see, all the red on this map, uh, I could actually propose a peace treaty to them. And you can see they're very much willing to sign it. So I take a look at how we can maybe manipulate the numbers over here a little bit. And I do spend a fair bit of time on the uh, diplomacy screens. So the thing is that my, my big test with this playthrough uh, compared to my last one with Zheng Jiang was I wanted to see just how much diplomacy really matters. After all the hyping up that Creative Assembly did, I wanted to see, like, okay, do I really care about these options? Does it really only boil down to one or two options that actually matter? So I tried spending time with the diplomacy menus, looking at trading ancillaries, maybe asking for more stuff, uh, giving more stuff, and you know, fiddling around with options, and you'll see that uh, rather than just... So I'm, I'm asking them for money, and I'm asking them for a monthly tribute as well, trying to get that proposed deal number to as close to zero as possible. And I start to, you know, see the limits over here. And then I realize, wait a second, I have another option. I could actually get a trade agreement going with these guys as well. And that'll help both parties. It'll give me a fair bit of money per turn. So you can see it gives me a little bit more leeway with how much money I want to, you know, <laughs> rip out of their hands right away. So there is this balancing act, negotiating agreements. If you want to spend time with it, you can. And I like that. I was worried that it was sort of all, you know, you had options, but you'd never use them. So pretty cool that I got a better deal by spending a little bit more time on the diplomacy menu. And now we have peace to the east. And Gongsun Zen, though, is uh, is going to be a problem. So we have to fight a battle against Gongsun Zen. Again, our enemy to the north, uh, he decides to come out and poke and prod because I was taking some of his cities, to be fair. And we have this battle where, I don't know, I feel like it was pretty one-sided. Uh, he had a relatively small army. I had a relatively large army, um, but with all my fire arrows and my dueling champions, I mean, I declined this one. I decided to go on a different duel, though. Uh, with all my uh, fire arrows, my massive RV, it does look really cool in extreme unit size, I have to say, uh, and the ability to, to duel the enemy with some pretty capable duelists, uh, things went pretty well for me. It was a nine-minute battle, roughly. Decisive victory. The enemy didn't stand a chance, and uh, I took minimal losses as well. So, Yan Xiao did well against two enemies, and we actually captured an enemy general uh, who we released for, again, a fair sum of cash and maybe some good relations. And uh, moving on, you can see uh, people want military access and they're willing to give me money for it. Uh, while in another siege battle, a lucky shot from, I don't know, an arrow or something puts a hole in the city walls of uh, Bohai over here. So we move in, we take Bohai, we take a lot of money from the uh, the battle as well, and that actually finally lets us recruit a second army. Two-thirds of a full army, big enough, and I needed it. Uh, and that kind of military strong arming, I think, got Gongsun Zen to uh, sue for peace. So with peace to the north now, I was able to relax a little bit and looked after some more reforms, got some more uh, financial you know, progress, while Zheng Jiang here was, I don't know, wasn't acting like too much of a bandit queen, wanted to get a trade agreement with me, uh, willing to give me, you know, money for it as well. So I took that on, and meanwhile, uh, Zheng Yan and I got better relations because of this charismatic leader event, so that's good and helpful. 
Back to the reform screen a few turns later, again looking at some options to make more money. Our economy is looking very good. Gongsun Zen wants a trade agreement. We're capturing more cities from the Han Empire. Things are going really well for me. And we're building these Yuan administration offices to try and get our prestige going higher and higher so we can become a marquee as soon as possible. Because I am running out of time here. Ultimately, it happens. I become a marquee and that opens up a ton of options for me. It opens up all the doors and windows to China. First of all, it lets me uh, get a Grand Commandant and a Grand Excellency, two new offices. It also unlocks a second administrator role for me as well. And uh, that's all helpful in various ways. I don't decide to spend too much money on that. They do cost wages and salaries and stuff. But instead, I turn my attention to uh, vassalization. And immediately, you can see Liu Dai over here, Liu Dai, willing to uh, become a vassal. Small faction. They don't really stand a chance. They figure that they could probably use me more than I could use them. And, of course, that's how vassalization works. It's a two-way street. They more or less immediately ask for my assistance. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. You can see the consequences uh, to that. It throws me into a war again. And the game does tell me why it's going to affect my uh, my standing. How it's going to affect my standing. I'm fine with it though. Gongsun Zan must die. I accept that. We go to war for our vassal because I'm a good overlord. And uh, just moments later, Zhang Yan over here wants a non-aggression pact. Again, I think scared with my military power. So I take a look at uh, Zhang Yan and his uh, willingness maybe to become a vassal. He's not really up for it. I try to have some negotiations with him. I've been trying to have these negotiations for a very long time. The big sticking point was how much he wanted. But over time, as I grew stronger and stronger, he started wanting less and less. But, uh, you know, no matter how many ancillaries I gave him, no matter how much money I gave him, it just wasn't working out. And ultimately, it boiled down to one simple factor. I had to give him some territory. I tried to avoid it, but again, I didn't mind too much. He wanted his copper mine back, and I thought, you know what? Take your copper mine. You're a pretty big vassal for me, and I will use you. I guaranteed his autonomy as well, but that's obviously not a real promise. I can annex him whenever I want still. Uh, but I immediately called him to arms. I, I, I needed his help, so to speak, against Gongsun Zen to the north, and uh, he did not say no. I could give him a war coordination target right away, and I wanted to test this out. Like, how well does this actually work? Thought I'd help him, or have him help me uh, right next to my border over here, sent him over, and uh, kept an eye on that territory, on that city there, to see how long it would take. And it was just a couple of turns before he rolled in and took that small town, freeing up my forces to do more important things, because there was a very large enemy army roaming through our lands. Um, meanwhile, down here, you can see to the south, uh, we got dragged into a war, as you saw earlier, and I could actually tell my vassal to the south where to go as well. So we've got this massive army to the north over here, we've got Zhang Yan uh, asking to help, begging to help us in our other war, uh, but also begging for help in one of their own other wars, uh, and at the same time, whittling down this massive enemy army so that we could roll in with our two armies and ultimately scare it off. So our vassals are actually working for us quite well. Pretty happy with how that's happening. And down south as well, you can see our vassal is working for us too, following that war coordination target. So feeling pretty good about that. And I can actually annex Liu Dai if I wanted to, but people won't be very happy about that. And it's maybe a little premature to cause that kind of trouble. So I decide uh, I decide not to do that. Let's not lose our uh, dignity. But Cao Cao over here was an interesting opportunity. I managed to actually vassalize Cao Cao. I got big enough and strong enough between myself and my two vassals. And I guess Cao Cao was having a tough time to the south over here. Uh, he decided to become my vassal and I could use him as I needed him. Unfortunately, I didn't quite get to that point. Unfortunately, I got to my time limit as per uh, you know what Creative Assembly said I can play and showcase. So at that point, I'm going to call it a session. This really was just to showcase how playing tall might be an actual viable option in Total War Three Kingdoms, something that I don't think has ever really been an option in the Total War series. So I was very curious to try it out. And I don't even know if Yuan Xiao is the best person to do it with. It might be a lot more efficient with some of the other warlords that we've seen. Uh, but all in all, it's just an exciting prospect. Uh, you had to grow your power base, become strong enough, and eventually you could convince people to join your side, to further eventually annex them and grow your holdings that way, maybe even become emperor.
I hope you enjoyed this video about Total War Three Kingdoms. It's a slightly different approach, I think, from what is expected, which is exactly why I did it. If you did enjoy, make sure you let me know by dropping a like and a comment down below. A massive thanks, as always, goes out to every one of my channel members and patrons for supporting this channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a massive thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.